Hello, this is Virtualist to Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. Yesterday I spoke about a game where the Queen and Bishops worked very well together, controlling three consecutive diagonals. Today's game had a very similar theme. The three amigos, the Queen and the Bishop pair, were instrumental in creating a win with a checkmate by move 16. In this case, the Queen and Bishop pair created a a diagonal net from which the king could not escape. Please enjoy! Let's start with a review. So chess.com's algorithm, I think I did fairly well in this game, which was fairly short, 16 moves. I think I played all right, you know, about 86% accuracy, uh, and a mix of generally pretty good moves and book moves and a small number of inaccuracies. And my opponent uh, did fairly fairly well as well, but made some mistakes and a blunder, which, uh, which led to the game going my way. Now let's move on to the analysis. All right, so my opponent played black, I played white, and I started with e4. The opponent played the Karo Khan defense, so c6. Uh, and now I don't have any particular um, uh, you know, moves against the Karo Khan, so in this situation I usually just try to take the full center, so d4, and as expected, d5. Uh, I played uh, knight c3, uh, and as expected, the opponent captured uh, the pawn on e4. I capture back with knight, uh, and then they develop knight f6. Now, in this position, um, I had sort of a number of options. I thought about uh, potentially playing um, pawn uh, to f3, uh, but um, I opted instead to develop my bishop. So bishop d3, uh, acknowledging that I'm potentially hanging that pawn. I thought that this was actually probably good for me from the point of view of development. So uh, knight captures knight, uh, bishop captured back, uh, opponent played e5, uh, and I now uh, develop uh, knight uh, f3. Three. This potentially would have been better according to, to Stockfish. Um, however, you know, I didn't really want a queen captures queen and then being forced to capture back with king. I, I didn't really like that. The opponent uh, developed bishop g4, um, which to me didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so I um, just quickly continued my development with short castles. Um, they surprised me by actually capturing the knight, and here I had a number of options, capturing with bishop or capturing with queen, and in this position I actually opted to capture with bishop. So according to Stockfish, queen was better, but in either case I'm ahead. Uh, my logic here was that I wanted to potentially open the e-file for my rook. And now uh, pawn captures pawn, so they finally sort of uh, captured that pawn, which I sort of gambited a number of uh, moves ago. Now clearly I can't capture it straight back, given it is defended by the queen. Um, however, as you can see, according to Stockfish, this was a very, very substantial error on the um, uh, on the part of the opponent. And if you look, you know, I've castled, I've developed pieces, my diagonals are open for my dark square bishop, uh, my queen uh, is potential, uh, potentially active, while for the opponent, uh, all their pieces are still on the back rank. Um, this pawn is kind of in the middle of nowhere, uh, so I'm very, very much ahead on development. So I bring my rook out to, uh, to the e-file as planned. Uh, they, uh, uh, they sort of uh, defend with bishop e7, which makes sense, though that bishop, of course, is now pinned. Uh, so I play bishop g5. Uh, I thought that this was potentially a reasonably forcing move, uh, given that uh, the opponent cannot move that bishop while it is pinned to the king. Uh, expectedly, uh, they played f6, uh, but now this now, uh, you know, damages the defense uh, of the king. Uh, and so, uh, bishop h5, now with check. Potentially, um, I was hoping that the opponent would play, um, play g6, so almost inviting that move. Uh, and if they did that, uh, that obviously would be a mistake, given that 
I would now be able to capture that pawn with the dark square bishop. Um, and they're in, they're in some serious trouble. They're in some serious trouble there. Now the opponent thought for some time and made uh, what I thought was the move they were going to make, which was to move uh, the uh, to sidestep uh, the king out of the way. Uh, and this was I, I was happy with this as it meant the king now cannot castle, and they're trapped effectively in their um, you know in their court. You know, if we think of this as a castle, uh, you know the the. Uh, uh, you know, the mansion of the king, uh, this is their courtyard, the king is now potentially trapped with a whole group of diagonal snipers um, you know, staring through the gaps in their defences. Um, here I thought I'd better move my bishop back out of the way. Uh, now the opponent, uh, the computer, sorry, the stockfish is completely fearless, <laughs> wanting to move the queen to g4. And I think the logic here is there's the potential then of king, uh, the, sort of the rook could capture, uh, would have an opportunity at some point of capturing uh, that bishop. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, depending on how it's been set up, you know, queen would be forced to capture back. And if my queen was in this position, then there's a potential here of, uh, of you know, forcing a, uh, forcing a trade. Here they now play uh, g6 uh, again, taking their uh, taking their pawns potentially away from the defense of the king, and this is potentially highly problematic. And from my perspective, now the bishops are back. You know, the dark square bishop is back. You know, there is now you know a loss of that sort of chink in their in their armor and in, in the defense, and so another check. King moves to f7, so you know, being forced around uh, their, little, uh, their little home, uh, while surrounding them are their pieces not able to provide much defense. Now I was actually potentially fine uh, with that capture, as I thought um, my queen could then, uh, could they then take that position, the king would then be forced uh, onto the g8 square, and I thought that there would probably be some possibility of um, of you know of a, of a mating sort of a, attack, or at least causing quite a lot of problems uh, for the opponent. So um, here, sort of, I sort of do a bit of a waiting move. Queen e two. Interestingly enough, um, stockfish uh, at at the stockfish uh, twelve on depth. 30 thought that this was an inaccuracy. Uh, at a lower depth, uh, Stockfish actually called this a brilliant uh, move. So, uh, so I think depending on the depth of analysis, uh, this is potentially good or potentially bad. But what I saw, I kept open that option of uh, of uh, of you know, capturing. You know, if the pawn captures, I'll be able to take uh, take that pawn. Alternatively, uh, you know, there was this attack here as well. Now the opponent he thought for some time, and I think then uh, makes a pretty much a blunder, a, a one move blunder. And I think what they were thinking was because I had lost the opportunity to castle, they were going to castle manually. So moving the king onto the uh, the second rank, and then moving the uh, then centralizing the king's side rook. I think that was what they were thinking, uh, and that's what they did. However, uh, what happens here? Uh, is that the king has now lost uh, pretty much uh, their last safe escape square? Um, so if the king came down here, the um, the uh, like you know the king uh, could only retreat to that square, and now it's lost that move. Um, so you know the the bishops uh, are uh, you know taking over those diagonals, and with king to e6 checkmate, it sort of covers. All possible escape squares. Oops. All possible escape squares. You know, the three diagonals creating a sort of cross-hatched sort of net, uh, and this is a potential strategy. You know, with the queen and bishops working together. So checkmate uh, was a fairly short game, good game uh, with the opponent. GG. Like my opponent from yesterday's game, the early impulsive trading of pieces in the opening was damaging as they lost their most active pieces, while supporting me in developing pieces. My use of the Alakine Gambit, effectively trading a pawn for quicker development, paid off in this context as by the mid-game I had a massive lead in development and initiative. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching!